This is Matt Cohen for Matt Cohen Photo Workshops. For more information, you can go to mattcohenphoto.com. That is M-A-T-T-C-O-H-E-N-P-H-O-T-O dot com. Today, we're going to be looking at the first of the Gilroy 2019 critiques. This is Deborah Mundorf. Uh, Deb was there last year at Gilroy. She was also there last year at Marysville. So this is her third trip to one of my workshops. And uh, today we're going to take a look at this trip. Uh, I think that after you watch this, it would be really beneficial to go back and look at her other two. Those will both be on my channel um, on YouTube. It's uh, it's pretty stark, the differences in the first two versus this one. So. Let's get into it. The first few are some detail pictures. Um, I grouped these together because they're similar enough that, that we're gonna talk about them together. Um, so this one is kind of a good example of focusing way too much on the one thing that you see and failing to create a picture out of it. There's not enough going on in the background, like maybe if there were mountains with snow on top of them or a lot of pine trees or something that would have been kind of a, I don't know, a good representation of something that you would see in California. But you don't really have anything good going on in the foreground. There's nothing at all in the background other than the sky. You don't have the whole saddle. There's no detail or anything. Uh, so this one is just not, there's just not enough going on here. Like it's good that you saw the embroidery and that's not something that you see very often but you still need to make a picture around that it just that can't be the picture by itself so this is better because we're looking at the detail of the saddle here um, but then you also have the horse and you have the depth of field here in the trailer so this is better than this one there's just more of a picture going on here more of a payoff for looking at it but there's still not quite enough it's still just kind of a picture of the saddle with some i don't know non-distracting backgrounds to it but really what you'd want to see is somebody standing on the other side somebody standing over here just you want if you see a detail like this the goal is to fit it into a picture not to make the picture about that thing very often the thing that you're talking about is not interesting enough to carry a picture and you didn't make it you know you didn't make this you didn't embroider this this is just somebody else's work and you're taking a picture of it and it's up to you to make that a picture not just a photographic representation of somebody else's work so hopefully that's clear as to why this one is better than this one but neither of them are the complete package this one is fine. Uh, it's very common though. So if you want a picture like this, I would try to figure out how you can get closer to it. And then also maybe pick your background a little bit better. You did a good job of blurring it out, but there's still a real bright spot here. And then you can see ad boards around here. So it's fine, but it's not, uh, it's not uncommon enough to accept this as the logical conclusion of this line of thinking. So I would say, I don't know, look for opportunities where cowboys are going to be closer to the fence and then have the right lens on and then choose a spot where, where they're going to be is going to be in between you and something interesting that you can make a picture out of. <clears throat> okay. So this is kind of the best of this group. Um, I like the way that this is arranged. It's just kind of, it's filling up more of the frame than we saw with this one. So let's look at these two side by side. You can see that just the the shape of this is more interesting. Like these are very similar pictures. Like we're looking at workmanship, right? Embroidery here and here. And they both have the horse kind of doing mostly the same thing, maybe the depth is a little bit better on this one on the right because 
it starts out higher here and then goes down further and then it's further into the picture over here. Here it's way more flat, right? It starts out not quite as high, doesn't go down as far, and then this doesn't go as deep into the picture. But the way this pops out of the frame is much better than the way this does. Like this looks like 3D, this looks like 2D. So this is much more what I'm looking for. You can see how she left the the sky here, uh, more of it, but then filled it up with the sombrero. So um, I like this one better. It's kind of a you know better version of this picture. Um, still could be better. I'd rather see a person in it. I'd rather see I don't know something that's not just a basically a still life. But if we're making a detail picture to go with a bunch of action pictures or portraits or something, then these are fine. Okay, so I really like the composition of this. Um, it's really, it's taking advantage of the 14 to 24 and getting all the way in close. Uh, I like the angle of it. The problem is that even at 3.5, right, you're not at the maximum aperture anymore, so you're looking for a little bit of um, more things in the frame and focus. So you have most of his hat in focus, you have his face in focus, and then you have the horse's eye and the ears and part of the mane in focus. And then all this here is out of focus, but this is the most prominent thing in the picture after, I guess, his face, but it's really, this is the closest thing to you. So what does that mean? <laughs> It's, it's tough when the thing that's most prominent and the closest to you <clears throat> is out of focus. It's, it's tough to recover from that, even though I like the rest of this picture, it's, it's kind of a deal breaker for me. So when you're this close, like this is like a foot away or something, maybe less than that, uh, there's not going to be a whole lot you can do. So you want to kind of move around and find a spot that even if it's a little bit further away, it's still close and it's still not bringing in distracting things from the background, but that at 3.5 or 4 or 4.5 or something like that, you can bring all of this into focus. There's no, there's no benefit for going shallower on the depth of field here because you have two things and they're both taking up a lot of space. Like the, the difference in distance from this edge to this edge is enough to make this out of focus, right? This is too close. So if you were, you know, shooting at max aperture, if you were shooting with a 24, 1.4, like going, going for depth of field here, isn't the name of the game because really you want all of this stuff to be in focus and none of it is in exactly the same plane, the same distance from the camera. So you really want to kind of put this up as high as you can. And looking at where you are here, you definitely could have raised the ISO a little bit and you could have uh, cut the shutter speed a little bit to move this up. So maybe ISO 400 and a six, you know, 16, 16, one sixteen hundredth of a second here might get you F5 or something here. And maybe, you know, you play around with a little more and you get to 5.6 and then you have all of this stuff and, and coupled with moving back, maybe three inches or something means that this whole thing is not only well composed, but it's also all of it's in focus, which I think is what you would want there. So think about that when you're composing that when you're in this close, you have to stop way down. And sometimes it's impossible to even do that if you're talking about the distance from a horse's nose to its mane this is a couple feet right so i don't know if you were this close even if you were at f8 or something if all of that stuff could be in focus so those are little details that when you're working in close they matter a lot one of the things we talked about at the workshop was the difference in moving a couple inches one way or a couple inches the other way or tilting your camera an eighth of an inch up or down can have a pretty big effect on the composition. And you've done all of that really well. I like how, again, how his hat fills the frame and then his body and his arm come across and that's when you pick up the horse's head. So this is all good. It's just the focus here that, that I don't like. 
so this is kind of, um, you know, maybe like a little bit less aggressive version. So this is when you step back even a little bit more, um, you lose kind of the in your face nature of it. Like this really grabs your attention. Like, wow, you were really close here. This one is more of a normal, like you're close. It's good. That's fine. But it's not, um, it's not the extreme close up that this is. So you lose a little bit of the impact of it. Um, I do like the main part of this picture, but the problem is that, again, if you had moved a couple inches over to the right, you could have taken um, at least the truck out, if not also this other person, and then have her set against the trailer. I think that would work a little bit more. But again, when you're working in close with wide, she's at the the widest that that lens goes at 14. So you have a lot of choices for moving around side to side, up and down, tilting the camera, zooming in and out. And then also, you know, just the, the physical, how close is the camera to, to what you're shooting. So when you get in that close, you, you want to really look through the viewfinder, figure out, do you have everything in the frame or is it distorting too much? Is it in focus? And then do we have everything that you don't want in the picture out of the picture? So that one didn't quite work out here, but as far as this goes, as far as establishing kind of a, uh, you know, you have to make the, the people that you're shooting feel comfortable. So you've done a good job there. She doesn't look uncomfortable. It doesn't look awkward at all, even though she's adjusting the, the chin strap on her hat. Um, so this is the beginnings of a picture, but again, working in close, you want to manage all those little details or else the whole thing falls apart. So um, these are, what we're looking at here are mostly the um, the Charos and the Escarmuza, the the Latin rodeo that was going on before. Um, I don't think this one is, but I put that in there because it was a detail picture. Um, so these two are again not the same people, but these are similar pictures, and I wanted to kind of put them side by side here. When you're shooting groups of people with a wide angle lens, it's hard, right? It's very hard because you have to arrange them in the frame. So. This is good. I like how you got in close here, but it's just a sloppy kind of composition. I know it's it's hard to arrange all these people and to get them to stand still for you to compose and all of that, but I like how this guy is. I like how he's kind of diagonal in the frame. This isn't good. Cutting, you know, not showing his head behind his hand makes it look awkward and then you have this empty space and then you have her looking at the at the camera you really want everybody to be looking at the same thing to kind of help the viewer figure out where they should be looking. And here, I think everything, everybody should be looking at the phone, but you have a head cut off here and she's looking at you. So I like that you got in here, but again, a lot more attention to detail when you're in here because inches matter and tiny little adjustments to angles and distances, all of those things matter. This one on the right is more well composed here, um, but you know it's it's kind of it's it's just boring. You know these people are, um, you know obviously they're they're sitting around they're giving a hard time to a little kid or something and um, I don't know I want to see more of it. So maybe in this situation it would have been more interesting if you were on the other side of the guys and you were showing their backs and his you know, trepidation or whatever was going on in his face. Maybe they were having a good time and he was laughing. I don't know, but I would rather see his face than their faces in this situation. And if you do have them, then try to figure out how to get rid of these gaps in here. Like you want a consistent kind of um, background to this. And so I have a truck and I have a gap with somebody walking and then a car tire and then a truck and another gap here. It's just... um I don't know, not, it's just, it's not consistent enough to be visually pleasing. It's, it's better composed than this one is. So what you want to do is get the connection, get the faces, get as in close as you can here, but then have them be arranged in a way that makes better use of the frame instead of having it full over here and then empty over here. So you're looking for balance. You're looking for the connection, the closeness, the angle, all of those things need to come together. And there's probably a picture 
if you melded these two together, but you kind of have to do that while you're out there, not after the fact. I'm really happy with this one. Um, I like how she used the sun. A lot of people are hesitant, I guess, to shoot into the sun and they want to shoot with it. So she would have been over here and it would have looked like a, you know, just a basic kind of wide angle picture, but having them with these crops up in the air and then the sun kind of just bouncing off of the, the hat like this is really good. Um, it's good for wide angle. There's a lot of variety in the tones. You can kind of see the clouds and you can see the detail in the horses and their dresses and the tack and all of that. So this is good. This is good, but this is like, man, it's kind of a missed opportunity here. Um, so it, you know, if this kid was wandering around, um, you know, maybe walk with him. You don't need to shoot him where you see him, right? Seeing this kid. Okay. Yes. I want to take pictures of him, but do I want to take them right here where there's just a fence and, you know, I don't mind that the sign is backwards, but this fence isn't super pleasing. I don't like this belt. I don't like these lifts. I don't like this trailer. Um, I don't know. I would have, when you see him, then you just follow him and you go somewhere else or you swing around to the other side where the background's not quite as in your face or, you know, this is where you try to do something with shallow depth of field. Um, but, I, you know, I, I don't need any of this background is just, uh, it's just not helping. So that's all I can see really, you know, like I see this and I see this fence and by the time I get to the kid and how cool the rope is and um, I don't know. I'm kind of out on it already. You have trash cans over here. These could have been easily cropped out, but they should have been composed out. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of it just has to do with being patient, right? So you see him and he's going to be walking somewhere. And if you don't like the background, then take your chances that the place where he's going or the path that it takes to get there is going to be more visually pleasing than the one where he is right that second. So once you've identified I want pictures of this kid, then, you know, you can talk to him, you can, you know, quietly walk behind him or um, take a look at the direction he's going and maybe see, do you want to be 15 or 20 yards up ahead when he passes something? Um, but you, I, you have to get away from thinking that just because you see somebody somewhere that it means you have to take that picture of them in that place. There's, there's other ways. Can we, you know, are you busy right now? Can you take a walk with me over here or something like that? Or where are you going? Are you going to the stables? Are you going to a trailer? Are you going to practice um, out in the field or something like that? You can ask those questions and those will help you make better decisions and get better pictures. Yeah, I really like this one. Um, so this is what you can do no matter how busy backgrounds are or anything like that you can always use the sky as you know if you're outdoors anyway you can always use the sky so i like how the rope is uh coiled over here i like how there's just that one strand so the the bulk of the rope is over here but then there's just this one part of it and you can follow that over here and then you have the curve like the curve of his hat and the curve of his arm so you have all these curves working these didn't have to work, but they do. You could have ones that clashed or that um, some of them were in focus and some of them out of focus, but the way these are going all makes sense to me. I don't mind the black and white. I don't, you know, I don't think it has to be. I think if you're shooting outside in this kind of light, maybe take advantage of the colors a little bit, but you know, if this is how you see it, then that's how you see it. This is boring. To me, I think that, you know, as cool as this is, I just don't need to see this at all, right? Everything that's going on here, um, everything that's going on here is taken care of here. You have the stitching on the hat and the the interesting clothing, um, all the details and everything. And then you, but you have a face here and you have a rope here where here you just have, um, I don't know, you know, like I like the, each individual detail is cool but you're not doing anything to really tie these together. This is just, you know, a snapshot as she was walking by or something. So I don't know, it's not enough. You would need either close up detail of the hair and the bow or something and the dress. Like there is, there is a detail picture to be had there, but you're too far away from it. 
like this and there's not again you would just want something filling the frame you know something that looked good like trees or mountains or that gilroy rodeo sign or something like that um so yeah i i definitely like this one a lot but you can you can tell just look at these two side by side um there's not much contest here the vibe the mood all of that is just so much better here and this is just something that anybody could do as as they were uh walking by <clears throat> all right so we have three calf roping pictures from behind um I, kind of look at these all three together and then we'll look at them separately but um you know sometimes you get lucky and whatever is happening ends up happening right in front of you right so this is a pretty good angle for this this is the best angle for this because you can see the calf was running you know directly right straight away you have the stop and you have the cowboy jumping off and you have that all you know in a really confined kind of space without very much waste this one is kind of second place to that the calf definitely ran off at an angle a little bit but you still have a, a decent stop it's not great you you really do want to have the ground here because having this is i don't know makes the picture more interesting i think having the horse sliding through and having all the dust kick up and everything you just have the very tops of it here and you lose the horse's feet so i'd want to see that um, but obviously you know it depends on how far away the action is happening if you're with the if you're shooting with the 300 uh, that doesn't zoom, then you're just really taking what you can get at that point. But when you look at this, the compose, uh, the composition is straight up and down, right? Everything is happening in this vertical. And here you have the rope kind of going off this way and you have his foot going off this way. So it's more of a square, but then you have these edges where there's not very much going on. So, um, you know, even though I like the, the way his uh his the way his the shape of his body is coming off of here is better than it is here like there's just more of a separation and you kind of lose his leg here you have all of this here so the form is better i like how the rope is here better but the composition is better here because just the direction that that everything was moving and there's not a whole lot you can do there this one is just the worst of it because it looks like this calf was zigzagging and he hasn't thrown yet. And, you know, this pole in the background, it's just, there's not anything really interesting going on here. So I would definitely look to um, these two. So we'll look at them full on. Like you can see that um, you have that transition from out of focus dirt to um, all the dirt flying around to then the in focus horse and cowboy. That's pretty cool. And then you have the, the mountains and the crowd in the background so that's why this one works the best and then you have this one you have the crowd and that's cool if you like this one better that's fine i really don't have a problem with that just i don't know the, like i said the shape here is better it bothers me that you don't have the bottom just you know just too high up that's uh that's how it goes sometimes and then um this one is just there's no there's there's not there's no good reason to look at this there's nothing nobody's doing anything interesting here it's just kind of a um, you know, an unlucky run. Like they just, the calf just didn't run in the direction that you would have needed it to, to make a picture on it. So you need to know um, when to let pictures like this go. Like you're going to shoot a, a set of 12 and not all of those calves are going to run straight down the pen. Some of them are going to zigzag and it might help you. Some of them are going to, and it might hurt you. And then maybe the rest of them run straight. And maybe you get six out of 12 that run directly straight. And that's enough. If you you know, if you're doing everything right and you get six of them, you should get some good pictures out of that. But then when the ones zigzag and they don't help you, you need to know when to let those go. Okay, this is a good detail picture. Um, it was hard to shoot the steer wrestling uh, at Gilroy, just uh, the way it's set up. It's a very long arena and they can go by you. And we were mostly shooting on the off side, so... Um, getting a detailed picture like this of the horn coming through his arms and then his face here. Um, this is good. I'm not super sold on this being black and white, but again, you do have enough, I guess, difference in tones to make it worthwhile doing it. But I, you know, I don't know. The action, black and white, I don't know. 
needs to be needs to be a real good reason for that. Okay, so these are uh, three straight up bucking pictures. I was really really discouraging people from shooting like this, um, not to not do it at all, but just to kind of take advantage of all the other things that go on at a rodeo and try to make more interesting pictures and take advantage of the access that we had. And so it's good. Deborah mostly did that, but I wanted to, these are the ones she sent. So I wanted to look at these together. Um, so, <laughs> all right, let's start, let's start here. This is, you know, whatever it's fine. It's bucking and everything, but, um, there's no great reason to show this because, Again, this is like a technical rodeo kind of thing, but you want his toes to be turned out so that the spur is actually working, right? Not, um, you know, just going right by the horse here. And then you want the legs to be kicking out a little bit more. So when you have a picture like this, that's just kind of, I don't know, it, it what it's incomplete. It's a low score. You know, it's, um, you, you know, when you're, when you're showing this, what are you communicating? You're communicating that the rider wasn't spurring the way he should and the horse wasn't kicking the way he should. And so what's, what's the rest of it? Well, the rest of it is we have some empty seats and sorry, um, some empty seats here and part of a flag or whatever. And then I don't know, it's cool that he's looking straight up and the sun's hitting his face, but it's not enough to save the rest of the picture. It's just boring and it's not a good example and it's not like visually pleasing. So just throw away. Um, so this is, you know, not standard or whatever, but I do like how these two legs, like the stock contractor is not going to like, this is not what a bucking horse is supposed to do. This is, you know, a, like a crow hop and not a, not a buck, but I like how the light is. I like the horse is looking straight ahead. I like that the cowboy is still spurring and the, uh, the two, uh, right legs are doing one thing and the two left legs are doing something else. I think that's kind of cool. Um, so this is fine. And then as far as like a classic kind of picture, this is good. And, you know, if you're, I don't know, if you're shooting action, this is basically what people are looking for. The horse all stretched out, the cowboy spurring, um, you know, freehand up in the air like this, bronc ran stretched out. So that's fine, but it's just not that hard to do pictures like this. Um, it's certainly not really any harder to do pictures like this than it is like this. So you just want to do enough of them that you have to do, but don't go overboard because it's boring. So this was the first night that we were there. And um, this was kind of a cool thing that some of my students noticed that there was enough room underneath the bucking chutes to shoot um, all the way under. So where there would usually be dirt, here there was a gap and they were able to fit their cameras you know if they uh, got down underneath the bucking chutes they could shoot out from underneath and it's very difficult because you can't really get your face as low as the camera is at that point so it's hard to focus and it's hard to see what you're getting um but it was kind of cool because it was sunset and you could do some cool things with that um and you can see how low she is because these are weeds that are growing here so she's lower than the weeds are which is cool um, so I like the, this part of the picture a lot better. I like how the, uh, how the sun that's going down is kind of bouncing off of this and you can see all the texture and the hoof marks and everything on this. She just got unlucky here. Like she did everything right to get to this point, but the way that the rider and the bull, like with his arm covering his face like this and it being a little bit soft because the focus is more over here really than it is over here. Um, I was, yeah, there's a horse. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, a little bit unlucky. Like you definitely want, um, you know, more of a, a distinct silhouette. Instead, the, the shafts are, you know, kind of covering up the horse's head here. And I don't know, it's just not, it's not distinct enough. It's not, um, you, you want a good outline. You want like the way that the tail is here and the way that the hat is on this side, you want that to be all the way around and you want to be able to see the full shape of the, of the horse here, because if it's a silhouette, then the whole thing is the outline. And if you don't have a good, strong outline, it's going to be really difficult to make it up. 
from there. So it's cool light and everything. And if the horse had blown up right here, you would have really had something or if it had just kind of come right across this way and kicked really high or something. But at that point, what do you say? Well, okay, I know how to do this picture. I know how to spot the opportunity. I know how to get my camera in there. I know how to focus without looking, all of those things. Um, and then you just do it enough to where you start getting lucky. You know, I put lucky in quotes there because lucky is you doing everything right, like you've learned, and then the horse or bull doing what it's supposed to do. And you can't control that. So that's why that part of it is luck. So this is better. Um, you know, both of these were kind of made in the same way. This one, obviously, a little bit later. Um, but again, shooting underneath the shoot gate. But here you have um, Dwayne, the bullfighter, kind of coming across. And you have the clown and the announcer back here. And then you have so much more of the silhouette here. And, and also more light. So it's not, a, it's not a true silhouette even. But you can just see so much more of what's going on here. Right. You can see his face through the cage and his arm and the, the way the shafts are here doesn't take away from the fact that you can definitely see that this is a bull and you can see the face and the horns and all of that. Um, so this is better. Would this have been better if the if the bull had been going sideways and kicking higher or if it had thrown the rider off and the rider was flying through the air? Yeah. But again, she doesn't have any control over that. She just has control over spotting the opportunity and then doing everything you can to make it work she's done all that so i'm not i'm not worried about any of this like this is way beyond what she would have done the last time that we were there or the time that she came up to marysville so i'm happy you know she'll get this eventually she'll try it at the next rodeo that she goes to and one or two of the bulls will do what she wanted it to do and she'll be in position and she'll have it you know you can't really ask for any more than that these are unpredictable you know not quite wild but you know not <laughs> you know, not friendly animals. So you kind of have to take what they give you sometimes. So this is really good. This is definitely what you, um, you know, why you have a 14 to 24 is to shoot up close in the, in the shoots like this. Um, even, so this is at 15 millimeters at, um, at 24 millimeters, you would not have been able to fit from his hat to the bottom, you know, like this would have gotten cut off somewhere. So having 15 and shooting it through the shoot gate, which he's doing, um, gives you that kind of freedom to, no matter, the horse doesn't have to go exactly in the right, you know, if you're shooting with a 24, it just has to do something right in front of you. This, you have a little bit more play. So I like how the tail's coming out this way and the flank strap is going straight up and his arm is going out. So it just kind of looks wild, but the you know, the angle and the dark sky and the light shining through, um, and then having the, the gate lined up so that it's straight, I think is, you know, is well done. And it's, you know, this is an exciting picture. When you see this, you're definitely going to stop and say, Oh, what's going on there. So man, this is a good picture, but this is like one of those really borderline kind of ones that I would probably not, you know, put on my social media or on my website or anything like that. It's, you know, I know that these horses can take this. I know that, um, you know, this horse weighs, you know, whatever, seven times as much as the guy weighs, all of that. But um, this is the kind of picture that if somebody wants to make a big deal and say, um, you know, you're making us look bad or something that you don't want to be in that situation of defending that. So anytime that it, you know, it looks like the horse isn't in control of what's happening, you know, it's probably the time to to maybe save it. But, you know, this is a photography workshop and we're talking about how to make good pictures. And this is a really good picture. Um, it's just, you know, it's just lined up so perfectly, like the way the horse is and the way that the shoot gate is and the guy pulling on the rein. And if that wasn't enough, then you have the person in green with the saddle behind holding their hat on and then, um, you know, looking for a way to get in there. It's just a really good picture. So I, you know, I get it. It would be tough not to post this one, but my, my advice would be just to, to leave this one here and not, um, you know, don't post it. So yeah, this is better, you know, like the, the horse is definitely winning. This one is pulling the guy along. So, you know, that's fine. 
Um, it's you know you got unlucky because you were shooting again with a fixed 300 and the action kind of moved too close to you and in a direction that you couldn't fit it all in the frame which is fine but at that point you know make a choice so the choice here would be just enough of the horse to know what's going on but then make it straight and have the guy's foot not get cut off on the other side that's that's what i would have done right so you know maybe cropped to here and then to here or something and then straighten it out so that's where the that's where it's happening so if you at some point you have to make a choice if you if you know you're shooting an event that's if you're shooting um let's say you're shooting with the 300 you're shooting calf roping from the far end you really don't have to work very hard everything's going to more or less come at you and it's going to all happen at a distance where you'll be able to fit it all in the frame but if you're shooting with the 300 across the arena <clears throat> and bucking horses are coming at you, you have to be prepared at some point that they're going to get too close to you to fit in the frame. And the same with the the team bronc riding is that it's just they're going to move all over the place. There's no way to know. And if you're not shooting with a the zoom, then at that point you need to say, okay, I know things are going to get unpredictable. I know that they're going to move too close for me to fit them all in the frame. What am I going to do at that point? Am I going to stay with the horse? Am I going to stay with the guy? Am I going to do like I said where just have – a little bit of the hind quarters of the horse and then um you know have all of the guy fit in there or is it just a close-up of the guy getting dragged through and then we just assume that he's getting pulled by horse because what else would he getting pulled by that would probably be even the best choice is just focus on him at that point but it's kind of like an anticipation thing you have to know okay how can this go how can this happen in a way that I'm not going to be prepared for. And if you're shooting with a long lens and you can't zoom the, you know, you're not prepared for something coming directly, directly at you and continuing to come. So that's when you have to say, okay, well that's um, something that definitely could happen. And what am I going to do? Either I'm just not going to shoot or I'm going to shoot and get bad pictures that are, a, you know, just a weird compromise between what they should be, or I'm going to really have a plan. And that's, you know, isolating the action or cutting off part of the horse to get the foot of the guy in. So you need to make those choices, but you also need to be prepared, know what you're shooting and know what could happen in the meantime. So we have some silhouettes here to end it. Um, and so I wanted to look at this one first because this one's kind of a mess. It's, uh, you can tell that right here is where the focus is because that's where the rope is really sharp but then by the time you get to the string in his mouth that's out of focus this is kind of out of focus this is definitely out of focus the horse so you have a kind of a mess of whether the outlines are sharp or not and that kind of ruins the silhouette like they they really all have to be kind of the same so if you're doing a silhouette there's no reason to be at 2.8 like at that point you want you want everything to be sharp, right? So you want to stop down so that more of this is going to be in focus so you have the nice clean lines on your silhouette. So don't, yeah, you don't need to be, um, you know, if you're if you're underexposing this at one eight thousandth of a second, I promise you, you'll be underexposing it at one eight thousandth of a second and, you know, F5 or something like that. So um, keep in mind what you're trying to do and if you're trying to do a silhouette, then stop down because you want those crisp, clean edges that make the silhouette pop out instead of all of this, which is all really soft. And, you know, even though you can't see it, it's you can still see that it's not in focus. So this is cool. I like the idea of this, like the um, the profile uh, silhouette of too tall. And you got this kind of the the sun going along the edge of the stuff that he was wearing and you have these people standing on around the edge and you have the the clouds and the sun and then you have the announcer here like this is cool the problem is that you just lose so much of this because there's no light you know there's not enough light coming down here but it was a good idea you just want to be in a situation here where you know maybe you move around a little bit so that you're lower and you can have more of them above where the fans are and to do that you would need to be closer and lower and i know they were out in the arena so maybe this was the best you could do 
but you know at that point you have to realize you're just you're just really barely getting enough to make this interesting and it is you know having this profile and you know with the whirly bird on his hat or whatever that's you know that's kind of cool but it's just not not quite enough because there's not enough light coming through here so this is really good i like how close she was here i think this is another one where she was um, underneath the bucking shoots um having the light come through a little bit unlucky because the bull looks like it's running off here it's not bucking it's not really doing anything dangerous but it's kind of cool that you have the bullfighter's hand coming in like this and you have the crowd in the background so you know this is a really nice picture it's original um and again you're doing everything right it's just a matter of doing it often enough that you can put together some where the bulls are doing something that's more interesting than kind of just running around and then this one is perfect <laughs> you know there's really nothing else to say about this um you know i guess it, it was far enough away that even at 2.8 you have a nice crisp outline of all of this right some of it's crisper than others but all of it is you know perfectly acceptable you can see you know individual um, strands of her hair coming out of her ponytail so that's plenty in focus and then you just have that you know that really nice light coming through um, you have the tail and you have the dust and the sunlight kind of mixing in there and then enough of the kind of the you can see the gradations of the color and the sky this is all really nice and then the sun peeking around and illuminating these people that are standing here like there's nothing that you could have done any differently that would have made this picture better so i'm really happy with this and this doesn't look like anything that you were doing before so um so that's really good let's look at a few pictures here at the end um you know just that i want to call attention to um yeah we'll look at these so if you go to a rodeo, especially, you know, an amateur rodeo, and you come away with six pictures that look like this, you should be happy no matter who you are, right? These are six legit pictures that pretty much everybody would be able to put in their portfolio and feel just fine about. This is a huge, huge, huge increase in the effort and the thought and the skill and just all of it, putting it all together. Um, you know, I, you know, there are 20 something pictures in here and saying that there's only six that are really good. That's not what I'm saying. There are six really good pictures here and Deborah should be proud of this. I can't say, you know, how satisfying it is to look at what she was doing before versus this. And I definitely encourage you to, after you're done looking at this to go, to the YouTube channel and look at the other ones uh, from Gilroy in 2018 and Marysville in 2018 because this is uh, <laughs> this is a pretty stark difference. So this is, I think, proof that this works. And uh, if you're interested in doing it yourself, um, this is Matt Cohen for Matt Cohen Photo Workshops. If you want more information, you can go to mattcohenphoto.com slash workshops. The pictures that we have been looking at in this video are from Deborah Mundorf, and she's on Instagram at Wellshoot Photography, I think that's what it is. Anyway, uh, look her up, Deborah Mundorf. Um, good work on this one. And still have a bunch more of critiques on this one, so stay tuned.